Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, and I want to keep showcasing more of the introduction to Linux class that I taught a few years ago. So the way we actually went about like using the keyboard and doing computer work in this Linux class was actually on a bunch of Raspberry Pi computers. So we had about 12 or more of these small microchip computers, and they were running Linux, so that was awesome for us. Um, initially, that was to just kind of, hey, show the students this is cool right we've got it we've got a computer the size of a credit card and it can do all this cool stuff once you plug in you know a keyboard a mouse a monitor an ethernet cable etc etc so that was good and bad in a few different ways because yes it was cool to have that hands-on activity every day we we actually would leave the raspberry pis in their own kit and each each week or whenever class would start the students would just get out that that kit and plug in their keyboard and monitor and etc cetera, etc cetera. this was good because hey i thought it was a little bit of activity though you're not just sitting at a keyboard you're plugging some wires and doing some stuff with your hands more than just keyboard typey typey and it, I don't know, it made a little bit more time for small talk and actual, like, okay, friendly classroom atmosphere when you've got people coming in. <laughs> that, and, and honestly, that's, I thought, a valuable, good thing as part of the class. Is I want to keep it real. I want to keep talking to these people, the students, right? So that also had issues because that time is taken up to set up the Raspberry Pi each day may not have been a really good thing. And a lot of times we actually had issues with getting our display going. Maybe it was just the faulty Raspberry Pi. Maybe it was a faulty like monitor itself or the cord. I don't know, but we had issues and that was a sticking point. Um, also the Raspberry Pi is nice, but it's not super duper powerful. It doesn't have an insane amount of horsepower. Um, so maybe compiling some stuff or uh, downloading some Raspberry Pi, uh, downloading packages was just, uh, it left something to be desired. But that's okay. Like, again, we knew that going in. But if I were to do this again, um, and had more resources or, or particularly could or would give any other advice, I would expect explore the Raspberry Pi for a little bit, maybe start the class off like that, but then transition to something that's a real, I can't say real, but because obviously Raspberry Pi is real, but a, a, a more upstanding, <laughs> that's still not the right word. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying. Uh, something else that's not the size of a credit card. A computer, maybe running Ubuntu or something that still showcases Linux um, and gets them in the scene with, with Linux, with Linux distributions and the operating system and all. Um, I actually had some issues during some live classroom stuff, like during a lesson, or even during the scripting Capture the Flag competition that I, I hosted in class, I had a bunch of binaries that I had created on my laptop, which is a like i386, a, like an Ubuntu, just kind of 30, like regular laptop, <laughs> not Raspberry Pi, AMD 64, I think, right? Or ARM, one of these, one of these freaking A, A things. But the architecture is different, right? So what I had compiled uh, would not run on the computers, on, on all the Raspberry Pi computers that were on all these student machines. And that was a little embarrassing. It was pushed out in the GitHub repository, but none of them would particularly run. So I just bailed on that. Not a huge issue, right? Maybe that's more a fault on my own, but those things do happen in, in Funny Story, whatever. The Raspberry Pi is cool, but uh, maybe we can have something more common than that to actually study and learn and integrate with Linux, maybe in Ubuntu. So we would need all the hardware and equipment to run a Raspberry Pi. We didn't use Wi-Fi. Um, I know there's probably a pretty quick and easy way to go about it, but... Um, Again, at the time, I just didn't. Getting the Ethernet cable plugged in was work, worked perfectly fine, and we had our own separate network we were working in. Um, all of the computers we had were VGA, so we ended up using a little adapter. Um, and again, that may have been an issue for some of our other problems with VGA displays and getting some people set up and running each day. So aside from the actual hardware, the software side of this now, the GitHub repository was awesome because that was my means as the content creator and as the course coordinator, essentially, uh, to produce content and then deploy it or pass it around to students. I'm not handing them physical pieces of paper where you're just handwriting code or stupid stuff. I wanted to keep people on the keyboard doing the hands-on technical work. And because everyone could use Git and just Git clone or Git pull, 
all the content and stuff that I would create, they would already have accessible. And this is going to be an awesome advantage and perk when I talk about training wheels, which is the shell or kind of the program that, that, that wraps around the shell and tries to handhold the user as they're using Linux and Linux command line for the very first time for no one who's, who's never seen that before. So that was kind of neat. And then the way we would hand in assignments or tasking and was was done through a student's private repository. Like they'd have a folder with just their own name and it would go to uh, GitHub. I didn't pass out a whole lot of homework because I understand that I'm a kid too and that's just not okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't give people a whole lot of tasking because it's a one credit course, it's an elective, but I did want to get feedback and I did want to know what was working? Were you learning things? Did you actually enjoy this stuff? So I would maybe for like the last five minutes of class for a day, just ask someone to bang out like just a stupid text file, like literally just a note. It's like, what did you like for what we were doing today? Like, was this an okay approach to actually learn something new? Did you feel like you were staring at a computer screen for all that time? actually doing nothing or was there some actual cognitive like recognition in there and you're, you're learning like some of the stuff is going to be retained and you can know it later because that's what I care about. I want you to learn for real doing it for real. I don't want to just talk about it in lecture during a PowerPoint, which I know is hard because that's what I'm doing on YouTube right now, but <laughs> I want you to be typing along and that's why some of the, some of the code and some of the material in here uh, encourages that. Okay. So the GitHub repository houses just about all of that code and all of the actual lessons, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the way that that was set up was just creating, there were honestly so few students in the class, I created their private repositories manually. And then it would just, again, push and pull what I need to for the class-wide uh, public profile, public repository. So the Raspberryan, I'm sorry, the Raspbian setup script, um, I can show a little bit of code here, but I'm not diving into the big stuff yet. Um, that was just a setup script for me to just literally kind of cook micro SD cards, just to have a bunch of micro SD cards that I could, uh, okay, f excuse me, format, I'll plug into my computer and, and just, okay, put on the Raspbian image so I can pop them in the Raspberry, run the Raspberry Pi, and then everyone had a computer they could use. Not too hard. Um, but having a script where I could just, uh, okay, just like up arrow hit enter over and over and over again would be able to deploy and prepare these SD cards would be better than doing it through a GUI and mouse and that stupid stuff. Um, despite the fact I did that for the GitHub repo. <laughs> I digress. Um, so... There is, I think, online, and again, I haven't, I haven't been checking up with this. Maybe this is different now, but uh, there is an install guide, and I have the Raspberry and set up code as just a bash script um, that would download the latest Raspberry image, the file name, um, find the micro SD card that you may have plugged into your computer or my laptop in this case, um, and maybe this location may be different or uh, where you're actually getting your SD card reader. Again, I guess I can't see the future for that if you want to do this thing, but this is how I was to quickly burn all these these images on micro SD cards. Um, so download the image, uh, prepare the file name, uh, make sure we actually have it, unzip the archive, etc. Download, etc. Unzip, etc. And flash the drive. So not a crazy, not a crazy complicated script, but uh, something that would make something menial and annoying for me into a little bit faster, especially just the physical work of, okay, pull out the new SD card, plop it in the computer, get the Go script, blah, blah, blah. Cool. That is all I wanted to discuss in this uh, video because next I want to get into training wheels, which is the big, big textbook uh, shell program that actually goes through the content and, and, and teaching of Linux. Um, so that'll be more and actually a lot more code, and that will probably be spread up into other videos. But I did want to talk about the hardware and software that we did to actually keep our work uh, and actually get integrated with Linux very, very easily and very, very quickly. We didn't do a virtual machines. We didn't have a it burned to a bunch of computers. We just had the small credit card, micro SD, <laughs> Raspberry Pi. Uh, and the GitHub repository was awesome. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I want to shout out my supporters here real quick. 
hopefully you guys are enjoying this video series at least a little bit. I know it's a lot of me talking and maybe not that interesting, but I promise we'll get into some cool stuff later. Thank you to all of you people listed. You're phenomenal. Spencer Clark, Gal Horowitz, Zoke Attila, Orgolot, the Unruly Detroit Overworld's Bastion of Terror, <laughs> Jan Grob, Timothy County, Jacob H. You guys are phenomenal. Um, I can't say it enough. That's why I do this at the end of every, every video because um, I'm literally forever grateful. Um, one dollar a month on Patreon gives you a shout out just like this at the end of every video. Um, five dollars or more a month will give you early access, quote unquote, to the content that I create. Because normally I record videos in bulk or in mass, um, and I'll give them to YouTube to gradually release, and they'll be scheduled for later days. If you want the content right now, immediately, or as soon as it's ready, that's what the early access can do. Um, Thank you guys again for watching. If you did like the video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment on what you think, what else you'd like to see, what we can do better, uh, what I suck at, what you didn't like. Please give me constructive criticism. I need that stuff. Uh, and subscribe if you're willing to. Uh, if you want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks so much.